न्यूज व्यूज वॉइसेस ऑफ द ग्लोबल इंडियन कम्युनिटी इंडिया अब्रॉड like you said 3500 rupees a month and you said not tasted milk and there were six droughts in last eight years and people were in depression and it was as if they were living because they were not dead but having said that at that level and there is another level which uh, which was bothering me so i would not say bothering is not the right word but we were a sone ki chidiya till the 1700 with 33% of the global economy 30% of the global trade today we are 3.27% we have become irrelevant if india drowns tomorrow some people will shrug their shoulder and say oh it was a great country that's the kind of irrelevance we have become and i believe that the cycle has to change and i am seeing that india is getting more and more in the economy but that's happening from top down you need to do the bottoms up too so if you were to take the worst area in the country and increase their incomes by 10 times you are a sone ki chidi again in the next few years so there was this thought which was the driving force it was of course the heart and the sympathy and the kind of things that they were going through and what i could do to help them but there was also a sublimal thought saying that india and who is going to come to save india who is going to come and change the whole thing we will have to roll our sh- sleeves and get down to work i don't see anyone coming from outside and helping this country we will have to do it ourselves i mean not the outside the country i see people from outside the country who are ready to help but i just what i mean is this country without any doubt is the greatest country in the world for multiple reasons uh, whether you agree or not but and i feel that we can become only if we increase the incomes of the farmers what they are earning 3500 now we have made it 35000 rupees per month if we can do that across the nation and and quickly i understood that while education healthcare everything else will maintain the status quo of the nation but if you want to transform the nation there is only one formula and that is sustainable agriculture at scale that's the only way 65% of our people live in the villages they do and they are living in such abysmal conditions when i went there i used to go and visit families who had committed suicide and the problems were all economic and somebody if he has committed suicide has not committed that day he has been dying the for the last 8 months every evening he thinks he is going to commit suicide and don't have the guts to do it and if one person has committed suicide there are 1000 people who want to commit suicide but don't have the guts so human being where is his dignity where is his life where is what is the value if these people 1100 of them commit suicide every year in that what about that region. in that one small reason and that entire family of 5 6 7 <laughs> <laughs> go through a life which i'm sure i know of many cases because the father committed suicide the son was forced to commit suicide so it's a it's a tragedy that i don't know anywhere else if i do not devote my life to that then what is we say in hinduism that we get a human birth after 84 lakh lifetimes i do not want to spend a single minute doing meaning in money making and hedonism <coughs> i think that life is has a more meaning more purpose to life and if i cannot help these people if i cannot bring in people like ravi ji and uh, 50 others 
If we all together cannot change India, then what will? Why only Ravi ji? We have every single person here who is going to be like Ravi ji. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, what Ravi ji does, nobody can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not underestimating you, but I'm saying yeah. Ravi ji for me is um, something else. Uh, somebody to spend uh, his life coming here, helping, calling up all his friends, to donating, getting people to donate. It's, a, it's another lead. So, I feel that I, you'll see everything else, but I just wanted to see. And I, when I went to this area, I quickly realized that doing a project or a plan or a campaign will not change this country. Because these are all directed towards results. It is only a movement which has the capacity to bring out the, your contribution beyond anything about yourself, beyond, like I said, money-making, hedonism, everything. So we saw that there were movements that have happened till now, whether it's the Gandhiji's movement or the one against emergency or Mandir, Mandal, or the latest Anna movement. But all of these movements have been negative movements. It's like wanting to break a building without having a blueprint to make a new one. So can we make a movement which is pro-development, pro-people, non-confrontational? And that is what we have attempted. So I will tell you a short story because it's not there. So when I went there in 2016, I went to create a movement. I had never seen a village in my life. I sold my house in Mumbai and started living in the village. And like typical Englishmen, or oh, Angrej, I call it, Indians, I thought I knew everything and we'll go and make some fine tuning and the villages will change. We quickly realized that we need to unlearn before we start learning about Bharat. We're all Indians. So I went there, started working, but no movement was taking place. It was a patriarchal society. No woman would come out. Male would come in hundreds. And without woman and without music, you can't have a movement. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling that how do, how do I break this? Luckily in 2017, and I want to give this small story. 2017 end, there was a village called Ravli, small village. And typically their meetings happen in temple premises. So I was speaking in my broken Marathi at that time. And somebody was speaking over me. So I got irritated. I said, at least don't drink and come to a temple from my I felt after the meeting, I should not have said it. He must be somebody's brother, somebody's uncle. But the Sarpanch of that village took it very seriously. And he went in the evening, he and three of the villagers went to that liquor shop. So they make that hooch inside mm -hmm. the, and said, uh, my young boys come from so far. Seven youth have died of cirrhosis of liver. In the evening, people are drunk and sleeping on the roads. Lady that started drinking, 10 year old has started drinking. Why don't you stop selling liquor? I don't know. Sandhya Kal ka samay tha. He said, I have seven days ka stock, hai. let me sell that and I will stop selling it. Ah. Hmm. So the Sarpanch called me. So next morning I went and caught his feet and said, God has come within you. Hmm. What will you do? How do you, how will you earn? So I will give you three pregnant goats, you start goat rearing this night. And seven days hence he stopped selling liquor. And I gave him three pregnant goats and then it was a formula that we used in all the 15 villages. And we would we would take a, some policemen, give notice that we are coming. The men folk would run away. I would catch that woman's feet and say, till I am there, the raids will not stop. How can you live a life like this? You stop selling liquor, I'll give you three pregnant goats. And in the evening, we would take those burning torch and go around all villages shouting, Daru Bandi Jalij Pai Jamin, you stop selling. And women would pick at the liquor shop, sit there and do Ramdun. And in 15 days time, they stopped selling liquor. So people who wanted to drink would go far away to drink. 
But what happened was the woman started saying our brother has come from Mumbai to help us. And now if you come for our public meeting, the first 60 rows are full with women. Mm -hmm. And Amko Manti Shakti Dena and singing. So movement suddenly happened. And because of that movement, we were able to achieve whatever we were, we were doing. So I just, uh, just quickly say that by now we have planted 50 million trees. We have harvested 4 plus billion liters of water. We are working in 4,200 villages. And our promise was that in cotton, soya, which they were growing, they were earning anything between 25 to 40,000 rupees per acre per year. I said, if we attempt and we can get their incomes to 100,000, <coughs> India can become a Sony Kichiri again. So from, let's say, 40,000 to 100,000 was our promise. And we used to hear anecdotes that incomes have increased substantially. So then we appointed Tata Institute of Social Science, hmm. a gold, stand, gold standard in uh, impact assessment. And uh, for six months, Raviji will uh, talk about it. I just wanted to point this out. In, for six months, 27 of their uh, people would go all over the villages, meet all the, they would not even allow us to be close to them. And in this February, they have given a report which says that prior to our intervention, they were earning, farmers were earning 38,700, in which 63.9% were earning less than 25,000 rupees per year, and 21.9% were earning between 25 to 50,000 rupees. So their mean income was 38,700. And one year after our intervention, your 0 to 100,000 were only 1.5%. 100,000 to 200,000 was 9.6%. And the mean income from 38,700 became 10 times more, 393,000 rupees. I think I've spoken enough. Good no, 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 these are such, I mean, they're so inspiring. everything into dollars, it comes to, let's oh, say, yeah. dollar a day. So you can just imagine, I mean, what will that guy do? And typically in Indian villages, you will find the family sizes are larger than Bombay, than Delhi, than Calcutta, of the world. So for a dollar a day, I mean, there is no option for him but to commit suicide. We started by calling that project Global Purli. Because villages in Purli, there were no buses that go to the village. There are no bikes. I know generations which have never gone out of the village. Mm -hmm. I said the globe should come here and we should go to the globe. Mm. That is global for me. Wow. Well, that's a really beautiful, powerful story. Was somebody else saying something when I'm uh, sorry? Uh, yes. What part of Maharashtra is this? Bida. This is in Marathwada. Marathwada. Yeah, Aurangabad. Aurangabad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that region. Aurangabad, Satara district. Yeah. Meenaji also works there. Yeah. Right. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah. So what was the trick by, you know, by way of, you know, increasing the income of the farmers? Because I'm also more than a bit of a farming in the So that's, campaign. so I, I didn't want to preempt the yeah. movie, yeah. which is why I didn't say that. All right, so we can wait. Yeah, so should, do you want to play the movie now or do you? No, 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 let, let Ravi speak also for a minute. Yeah. Go ahead. Ravi, we would no, love I to hear. No, no, I No, no, I want to hear. Well, I personally, and I think I can yeah. speak for There's everybody. Nothing. You know, yes. your, so the I'm reason, what, what, why did... Why did what, you get involved? Why? <laughs> you could have done... Um, there were there are 100 fantastic causes that we can each devote our lives to. What triggered, what is it that resonated with the work that Mayank was doing, or what is it that got you onto this bandwagon to say, I am going to support this through myself, my foundations, my trust, my foundations, and my you know entire organization, not just as we talked about money. I mean, everything I've read about you is incredibly impressive and amazing, but hearing from Mayank how he feels about you, that is almost can speechless, can right? Can I, can I say? During the COVID days, he made a list of 116 of his friends who were chairmen or owners of company and every evening would spend one to one and a half hours talking about this. 
this passion and this love for the people, for me. And I've lost some friends. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have them as friends? Yeah. I guess that's so, the question. So, right. Right. The famous, why Ravi, why? Come on, I <laughs> Why, Ravi, why? And were you able to convince? I guess at the end, it's always about <coughs> passion and sharing your ideas. Then obviously, many of them joined and helped and got involved because of you. But tell us, what, what was it that... that <coughs> Frankly speaking, you should thank the government of India. Up till about five years ago... There Very was, rarely do we hear anybody thanking no, government no, of India. There was, <laughs> in this case, you have to, because there was no obligation on any industry to do anything. Making money, paying large taxes was all that was required by the government. And oh, the five percent CSR. Because okay, so the, the large associations like Fikis and CIIs, wherever one would speak that uh, we should be the one who should be going and telling the government that you make us uh, obligated to do something, mm. and they will they will say to pagal log hai. Arey to Hindi mein bolte na apne pair pe gulari. So why are we going to lose some money just because uh, the government wants you to do it. Anyway, so somebody must have suggested to the government in the, uh, from the bureaucracy and they came out with the law that every company has to spend necessarily 2% of their net profit of the average of three years. So if one year out of those three years, let's say you made 100 instead of 20, Taking the average of 2%, that 100 will come for the next three years, which will raise your 2% number. And then for three, four years, like most of the time the government of India will do, I mean, they will make an obligation, but there is no repercussion if you do. I mean, they have made a law, they have done everything, but if you don't do what, there is nothing. So someday somebody must have given them that gyan that nobody is doing anything because there's no obligation. Just saying you have to do it means nothing. So they came with a law that if you are not able to do it, and as you know in India, most of the Indian companies year ends on 31st of March. Our financial year doesn't end in December, it ends in March. So if you are not able to do that 2% spend up till 31st of March, then the 15th of April, you have to give this back to me. Meaning the Prime Minister is really fund this one, that one. And we'll do it for you. If you can't do it, you give it to me, I'll do it. I know where to spend on CSR money. Then every industry said that it is better to do yourself than giving it to the government where mm -hmm. you don't know whether 70% will be leaking or 30% will be leaking or 90% will be leaking. So that really set the trend. And you have to admire Modi ji and the Prime <coughs> and the whole bureaucracy to do that. It took them a very long time to come to that uh, decision making, but they did it. Then, and there was something happened in uh, in one of our companies where our profitability jumped by, let's say, 10 times. And and that impact of those two, three years, because of the average of last three years will be continuing for five years. If you made tons of money in two, three years, and that will be counted for the next three, four years. So we had very large number of uh, dollars to be spent on uh, two percent CSR and at that time one of my friends from Bombay introduced me I'm from Delhi because he is in Bombay so he introduced me we were in Tanzania in Serengeti we met somebody who went to Serengeti recently uh, so he suggested that uh, why don't you meet this guy he's an amazing guy and uh, he started working doing this thing so so call him and meet him so I called him uh, he came and uh, I had a board meeting. I said, luckily, hey, we had a board meeting in one month. So I said, you come on that day where we have a board meeting uh, so that you can present yourself to the board. So he came a day earlier. He gave me the presentation. He told me what all he was doing, which was obviously very impressive. Then being a consultant all his life, you know, as we all know, there how what to what to convey is important but how to convey is more important i mean the same thing you can convey in a very very mediocre way and nobody will understand what you're talking about but the consultants have this habit of telling you the most difficult thing in three words five words or half a sheet
which is what he did in 10 minutes the whole board was floored i mean how did you get this man i mean and one of them said hum mere ko lagta hai gandhi naam mein hi kuch hai so rahul bhi gandhi hai wo dekh raha hai anyway so so that forced us to look at uh, three four five things we did the other three four things uh, because of that big number but then this became our pet project because it was purely saving lives and as he rightly said uh, 1100 suicides uh, per year it's a government record we are not saying anything and again it's a government record that in the last four years that number is literally zero so in four five years if you have saved 5000 suicides and the means, ripple effect on the entire the family, family the community the, family. the village the country and for a dollar a day you can imagine i mean what kind of a life can you live i mean you can't even probably have uh, one meal a day e- even in the poorest of the villages 1 dollar a day and 6 7 8 mouths to feed it's impossible so in that backdrop we we joined and then gradually i requested him to to replicate this in madhya pradesh where we have a substantially large industry which he did but uh, we told him one day one that i am giving this money to you don't bother about madhya pradesh this that uh, just because you like madhya pradesh do it but uh, my money is going into your pot i mean if that has worth 1 rupee here and 80 paisa here you better spend there so in that backdrop he dropped uh, i uh, joined it and as we get involved more and more and more and then we went to the site two three times and the kind of stories that you heard kind of transformation that you saw two three years later is is absolutely mind boggling i just before i finish i had an occasion about a year ago to to meet the ceo of uh, melinda and bill gates foundation he's a south african guy and uh, some of you probably will know ashoka university you yeah. know ashish davan so ashish is a very good friend of mine and i'm part of ashoka from day one so uh, and ashish gave up his very very plush position he had started a chris capital became the largest uh, in terms of return to the investors it was by far better than morgan stanley's of the world and then he quit at the age of 45 and he is devoting all his life to education giving back to society so bill gates invited him to be part of the melinda gates foundation uh, where their budget i believe is 9 billion dollars this year so his ceo came to delhi and he asked ashish to invite 20 30 people to understand what is happening in india how to improve what we are able to do so when you have to speak for 2 3 minutes and 20 people have to speak and tell something to the ceo so i to struggle a lot to say that what can you say in 3 4 minutes about this particular project so i find found a punch line and when i turn my turn came i said look i mean in this country the life of a farmer is worth about 250 dollars but for that 250 dollars that particular guy probably is going to commit suicide and this entire family will then be totally wiped out then obviously as an american i mean you get shattered i mean 250 dollars life of a farmer what do you mean when i explained to him so the 3 4 minutes which was allotted to me went on for like 10 12 minutes because now this guy is asking i can't stop so to today at the scale which at which we have uh, gone in that project all you require is 250 dollars mm-hmm. last year our budget was I, i'm just asking you a question just make a absurd guess in the fourth year of operation last year in 2023 based on the first two three years of success how many fruit plants can you plant one organization plant on a daily basis i'm, I'm not talking of half yearly six monthly on a daily basis all of you have houses all of you are planting trees flowers and everything 
you know how complicated it is and then to look after them. So just just make a wild guess. She said she knows we, the answer she did. We, <laughs> we came here because we saw your video. 100,000. So 100,000 fruit plants every day. Every day. Every day without fail. That's amazing. So one question that just jumps out is I hear this. First of all, you've got remarkable execution ability to do this. Tell us a little bit, share along with, to achieve these incredible results. Describe your organization. And what is the structure that you use? Oh, I guess time for the video. Maybe yeah, it's all, maybe it's all the video. Look, we're already at 7.30 There are gaps. Okay. Then you ask yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, so let's get to the video and then we'll round down. But the then we more. had to stop midway in July, August, but money was all gone. Okay. When you go to a scale of 100,000, you need a lot of money.